All right, folks, we've got the x-axis mounted, and now what we want to do is we want to indicate that magnetic slide to zero all the way across the axis. So what I'm going to do is bring it all the way to one side, and I'll see if I can't bring this in a little bit closer. We'll zero the indicator out and we'll begin to traverse the table and see where we stand. I roughly assembled it using the combination square that we saw before. So we'll see how close that, uh, that ends up being. The idea here is to get it as close to zero as possible to eliminate any uh, any error in the slide. And that doesn't really look too bad. I think we're really only looking at uh, wow eight thousandths. So I'm going to loosen up on one side. and tighten up on the other and let's see if we can't get this in a little bit tighter. Alright guys, I took a look at the uh, tolerance that uh, we need for parallelism and uh, the manufacturer recommends 0.1 millimeter per meter of travel and uh, that comes out to be just about four thousandths uh, of an inch over one meter which comes out to be about uh, 3.2 feet so I've got a 30 inch uh, scale that we're dealing with here as I pass through the camera and uh, what I've had to do is install a scale support which comes with the package uh, it's basically just two uh, two clamps uh, that I've drilled and tapped uh, into the mid span of the scale. Uh. All right guys, uh, we're on the back side of the uh, the saddle now. I couldn't really get good uh, position on the tripod, so uh, please excuse the handheld uh, shakiness. But this is the bracket that I was telling you about. Uh, I had to kind of bias the uh, slide uh, up a little bit to make up for the crown in the, uh, in the ways to get this to run parallel. Um, it just kind of fits inside of a groove. Uh, there's one for this side and there's also a groove on the top of the slide. I don't know if you can see that very well uh, right there. Uh, but at any rate, uh, we've got that uh, squared away so the slide is pretty much, uh, or I should say the scale is pretty much on there uh, permanently now and what we'll do is we'll concentrate on uh, center punching the uh, adjustment holes for the reader head and the bracket assembly there. So let me get you in a better position. All right, we're ready to find out where we need to place the reader head. And there is specific tolerances that this reader head needs to be set for and right now we're just going to kind of rough the holes out the uh, the simple attachment they have here has got some really nice slots in it it's going to give me a lot of flexibility as far as uh, moving this uh, this reader head up and down and it's also got two sets of uh, what they call grub screws uh, basically set screws on uh, on either side where I can adjust for for rocker back and forth and tilt up and down so I'll be able to get this uh, pretty parallel with the rest of the uh, the scale right now uh, as you can see I've realigned the head in respect to the uh, the bar uh, simply the barcode is matching the same uh, side as the uh, as the reader head so we should be uh, 
should be able to keep this configuration, especially now that the now that the scale is uh, on there permanently. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of play around with this a little bit. To get... What I'm going to try to do is find the center of the slot as best I can here. Hopefully that should do it. Got some, some nice pin pricks there. Got the super adhesive double-sided tape to deal with here. Get off of there. Oof. As you can see, this stuff is whew, impressive. I don't use a whole lot of double-sided tape, but I would have to say that this is by far some pretty aggressive stuff. At any rate, I'll see if I can't find my my punch and the holes. Get myself a little better start. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to throw a rag down only because drilling into this cast cast iron is something that uh, you don't really want to get that dust into your uh, into the ways of your machine. So I'm going to put a, uh, a red rag down there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the tap drill for the number four. The screws that are going in there are number sixes. They are uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit larger. So they're going to take a number nine uh, tap drill size. But I wanted to, uh, wanted to clear out what I could and get this hole started straight. And then I'll go back in with the larger drill and hollow it out so to speak. So let's see, get this up there, get this here, right there is good. That looks pretty perpendicular. And pretty straight there. We will begin to <clears throat> hollow this out to the correct size. All right, I'm gonna get that like that, and check that. That looks good. This might require two hands here. Check this against my reader head, and let's see, that looks like I've got plenty. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's just terrible lighting. My apologies. But we're a good uh, 316s past the tip, 
So we will consider that to be uh, done. And uh, we'll go ahead and blow this, uh, blow this out and get this off of here first. Got that cleaned out. Get that going. Get the tap ready. A little bit of lubrication on it. about all there is to the bottom of that. Blow this off. This one I think I'm going to go ahead and chase with the uh, with the bottoming tap only because I really don't want to go any farther in with the drill and uh, I really want to get as much useful thread out of this hole as possible so when I get to the bottom I'll blow it out and then chase it with the uh, Chase it with the bottoming tap and uh, that'll be that. I think we've got plenty of thread in there, but uh, just to make sure, um, I think we'll go ahead and, uh, and do that. See if I can find the bottoming tap. All right, quarter, six by one. All right. This is a uh, spiral fluted bottoming tap. I don't know if you can see that very well. Come on. But it's uh, interesting. Never used one before. I picked it up at my local uh, tool distributor, Hemley Tool, out here in Connecticut. And. Uh, Hopefully this will do the trick. Let me go ahead and blow these holes out. I'll put a little bit of 